Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces. So in our ever quest to improve the channels, we have separated from Digital Asset News, which is more of the, the basic run-of-the-mill news stories and a little bit of trading. And then we went over here to Dan Clips and we do more advanced things and take a look at different projects. And one of the projects I wanna to talk to you about is one that I think is going to be exceptional and I'm gonna tell you why. So this is permission.io. And I was actually reached out by a subscriber who said, hey, I'm working for this company. It looks really promising, take a look. Sure enough. So first of all, I'm just gonna give you a general overview of what permission.io is. Essentially what's happening is that instead of you just sending all your data over to Google and Facebook and Instagram and everything else, um, these guys are gonna pay you for your uh, information and they're going to have targeted ads sent to you as you watch them. So why would we do this? Well, first of all, if you're on Google or you're on Amazon or you're on any different social media platform, guess what? They're collecting your data. And I know some people will say, well, I use Brave and I use this and that. And that's true. There is a great uh, ad blockers. So they don't get your, you know, uh, you don't see ads. There's also things like Brave where uh, people don't give up their information. However, the thing is, that's you. How many people don't use the Brave browser? Hint, it's a ton. And with everybody's coming into the cryptocurrency and digital asset market, I can tell you right now, this I think is going to be uh, pretty big. So when you go to the website, there's a quick uh, two minute overview video and it has uh, Charlie Silver. He's the CEO and he talks about what exactly is exactly pretty much what, what I told you. So I just wanna bring you in and just uh, do just a, a little review of what this whole project is, the team behind it, a little bit of the tokenomics, white paper, and then we're actually gonna bring in Charlie here and I'm gonna have a little quick little interview with him and uh, he agreed to come on. So this is what's going on. It tells you, because what is ask? Uh, enables permission advertising for e-commerce, which is be pretty nice, right? Just sit around and you can actually watch videos and get paid for that and ask token. And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, new data, get rewarded, the permission coin. Here's where you can find the coin economics, the white paper and the summaries. And then right here, you can join. And to join, it's pretty simple. You just, uh, you know, put in your, your email. And when you do it, it actually, actually, you have to go through uh, two-factor authentication, which I thought was pretty cool because a lot of places are just like, ah, you can just set up a, a simple SMS or something basic and it doesn't go anywhere and then people get hacked. On this one, it's like, nope, 2FA right away and that's the only way. I think that rhymed. So once you sign up, uh, you'll go into this platform here where you can watch a video and get paid in 100 ask tokens. Pretty cool, right? And then over here, it's a question mark. So, you know, whatever is going to be and all the different things here. And these are direct advertisers. And then down here, you can uh, start to shop on the stores and you can get crypto back and ask, kind of like what StormX does, uh, but it's in the ask token. And here on the shop, uh, you'll see that there's some... Uh, there's pretty decent, actually pretty good partnerships. They've got, they've uh, Samsung, HP, Toshiba, uh, Philips, Mattel, Disney. So they've already got, they've already secured these partnerships. So it looks pretty exceptional. If you're shopping, you could use one of these or some other platform. So not too shabby. And then the big thing about, about Ask, because we just went over very quickly uh, the basic overview, right? You watch something, you get paid in it. Instead of just being bombarded with advertisements, which is what happened on YouTube when you clicked on this video, uh, just hint, hint. The bigger thing that I think is their team. And you've always heard me say on this channel and Digital Asset News, the original, was that I invest in people. I don't invest so much in projects. I mean, a great project is good, but if you don't have a great team around you, it's gonna flounder and it's gonna take a long time. Check out this team. So first of all, this is Charlie Silver, CEO. He co-founded uh, Reality Shares. He's uh, had successful exits, seven publicly traded ETFs, including the first blockchain ETF. And uh, he created uh, RealAge back in the day. I think that was like Dr. Oz and things like that. And uh, he sold it uh, for over nine or nine figures, wh whatever that is. Then you got Hunter Jensen, the CTO. He was building uh, websites in 1998. He's been around for a while. Looks like he knows his way around the websites and how to build everything. You got Rob Gregory. Uh, he was a co-founder president at Husay, president of the Daily Beast, huh, as well as publisher of Maxim. So... Business development, I think he's probably got a uh, pretty good uh, head and shoulders as far as marketing. Director of Investor Relations, LeFay. Um, 
background in finance technology. Eh, okay. Joe Underbrink. Here's the chief data scientist and mathematician. He was in development of applications of data algebra to database management. Prior to permission, he also spent several years using machine learning AI to develop predictive and prescriptive analytics tools for EOG and 3M. You know, those small companies, not too big, sure. Then you got Bobby VP Marketing. And, and you can go through this. I'll le leave the description uh, in the, uh, or link in the description. But the people that you surround yourself with, marketers, developers, computer scientists, mathematicians, business analysts, that is really how you get ahead. It's not just like, we've got a pretty good idea and it's in the basement. I mean, it could work, <laughs> worked, for, uh, worked for Apple, right? But uh, to really get things off the ground quickly, build a great team and it will come. And this is just part of it. So when I'm looking at all this, I'm like, okay, I think that uh, we've got a pretty solid team. So let's break into the white paper and uh, just take a really quickly look at the tokenomics. So this is 14 pages. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. Uh, I just highlighted some things I think you should know about. So the user incentivized plan leverages a pool of 40 billion coins. Just so you know, the max supply of the ask tokens right now are a hundred billion. And right now it is ranked like number 800, 900 on coin market cap. We'll look in a second, I forgot. And it's under a penny. So if you've ever seen things in the past about what really starts to, to move and shake, uh, it's these projects that are just undervalued and are new and are startups. There's a little bit of risk, but uh, this is what it is. And just as a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to uh, look, or I'm not telling you to invest into it. This is uh, financial opinion. I will probably, no, I will be getting into this project uh, hands down. And um, you should do your own research. I'm just one person you should look at. You should look at the white paper. You should look at the website. You should uh, watch this a couple times and then look for other things to see if this might be uh, something that you are interested in and make the decision what's best for you. Do not listen to just some random person on YouTube. It doesn't work like that. You have to do your own research. But I did a lot of it for you, so you can uh, do a little bit more. Anyhow, the, uh, the plan. You got 38 billion tokens for signups, 1 billion additional tokens granted to the first 5 million users. Good idea to get in early. 1 billion additional tokens given to users between 5 and 20 million. Okay, so moving down. The model is set to end once 500 million users are reached. So just so you know, there's... You know, as, as time goes on, you can't uh, keep giving out these uh, great incentives. But there is a referral program, and that's going to last for a while. But again, earlier the better. Referral coin rewards are also dynamic and are equal to 35% of the baseline coins of the corresponding market cap. So as things go up, the referral program will go down a little bit. To ensure the pool of coins won't exhaust before 500 million users are reached, we assume 75% of the coin pool will be for referral rewards as it's key driving. Of course. If you want to build your business real fast, this is what I've done with every one of my businesses. I have a referral program in place and, and there's different websites that you can go to and just make it a referral program, but it's the fastest way because who do you trust out there? Uh, you usually trust your friends and family and people who tell you. So when you have a referral program, it's like built-in trust. And you just say, look, I signed up for this. I did all my, my research. Take a look at this. And here we are. And uh, maybe you sitting right there have signed up for a platform because of something that I've talked about before and you've done your own research. It's the same thing. It's the fastest way to really get things moving. In my personal opinion, uh, that is just how I've uh, done things. So network effect and user growth. And they talk about comparables. Here's one of the most interesting things. For utility, Metcalf's law, and how things just start to grow, you have to take a look at what is going on within, within. And uh, not to make it too confusing, I'll just show you. So the comparables, they're, they're comparing themselves to Facebook, Twitter, Snap, Pinterest, and just an average and, and, and aggregate. So this is their first year. Uh, they just got uh, listed on three uh, or a couple of, uh, of exchanges. And you're looking at, in their first year, they expect to grow 3,000 plus percent which could happen. It's really gonna depend on the relationships that they build. And it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And these, this team that I see right here probably knows a lot of people and probably has a lot of inroads. And then 2022, 297%, 100%, and so on and so forth. And they compare that against Facebook and Twitter. And they say that permission could reach five to 25 million users by the end of fiscal year 2022. 
the more users you have, Metcalf's law, the more of that, the, the value increases, however you want to quantify uh, value. But just to talk about Metcalf's law, and this is what I talked about with, with Voyager and how, and uh, this is one of the things that we always talk about on the channel. The more people that you have, and this is what happened with Facebook. See, and it was created in 2004, five, six, seven, eight, just kind of built and built and built. But then all of a sudden when you double and then double again and double again, because people are telling each other like, hey, you should get on Facebook, you should get on Facebook. And then what happens? The value increases, not be, I mean, because there's a lot of people, but what do they do with those people? They monetized all those people and they started to sell all your data to all the advertisers. And that's why the revenue went through the roof. And that's why they are for the S&P 500. It's Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and, uh, uh, Facebook, that makes up the lion's share, at least 25% of the S&P 500, of all the top 500 companies. And this is the reason why is because they grew so fast, Metcalf's law. And take a look at it again. The more people you have, the more the value increases, however you want to quantify that. For me, the more uh, people you have, the more utility you have, and the more it becomes uh, more of an actual asset. So that is what uh, Ask uh, has looked at in the past. And I think this makes a lot of sense. So Moving down, well, we begin our referral mode with a base of 350,000 users. We expect 30% of users to engage with the platform, expect each user to refer for other users, and assume we'll take 15 days for user for four other people. That's ambitious. I'll be honest with you. I mean, if you think that can happen, sure. You know, like I never thought Dogecoin was gonna go to a dollar and uh, we're on our way. So uh, I don't wanna bring that into it, but, but in all honesty, uh, four people, sure. Uh, maybe two people, two to three. Oh, all right, I can see that. Uh, but regardless, it's a, it's a pretty fast growing platform, but I can see why. And if you look at what Brave does and how it brought all the people in because they didn't want to share their data, now we have Ask and you're like, well, I gotta, I'm going to browse these things anyhow. And if you want my information, you want to send me uh, personalized ads, you can do that, but you got to pay me. And you got to pay me in this ask token and here's my account and here's where it's going to be. I'd rather do it like that. Uh, and then just sit around and watch a, a couple ads every so often. But not only that, it's about not what you will do, but think of what the billions of people around the world could potentially do. And remember 2021 is I think going to be a fantastic year. So this could be one of those things. All right, moving down and to finish up, I think this is the last part here, coin supply, uh, hard cap of hundred billion. Ask tokens, 40% are allocated to users, 15% are allocated to the team. So just so you know, 15% is the team, 25% are allocated to purchase and supporters who intend to participate and render supporters to the ongoing development of the permission network. And 20% are for developers. And then the last part here is ask will not reach its hundred billion hard cap over the next 10 years, as there are still some coins to allocate. And also they have a locked up. So when you take a look at this, you're like, and the rest of this is just uh, projections and what they think could happen. I'm not going to go over that because all these projections are based on what they could potentially do with what they think could actually happen. And what they really have to do is again, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, so do they know a lot of these people to get into the pipeline to bring advertisers over from a Facebook, from an Instagram, from a Twitter and be over here so that you can watch it and earn the ask tokens. That's, the big question. And in all honesty, <clears throat> uh, this is something for uh, Charles to answer. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna jump right into the interview and I'll have him answer all these questions and maybe give us a, a little bit better overview of what the ask token is. So let's jump in. All right, everybody. So we just took a look at what permission.io is and what it all encompasses from a basic understanding. So thankfully, uh, Mr. Charlie Silver here has agreed to uh, join with us to talk about Permission.io. Uh, just so you know, Mr. Silver here is the CEO of Permission.io. He, uh, in the dot-com age, which some of you may or may not be old enough to remember, there's this thing called Real Age. And Charlie here sold a Real Age uh, to a company, and uh, that was in the very beginning stages. Then he was the co-founder of Reality Shares. He did a, uh, seven public ETFs, and he was the first uh, blockchain ETF out there. So. Uh, Charlie, thanks for coming by. Help us uh, understand a little bit better about what permission.io is and the tokenomics of ask. Well, Rob, thanks so much for having me on your show. The simple, there's two simple ideas. 
Our company, Permission.io, is dedicated to helping individuals earn from what may be their most valuable asset they own, which is their data. 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 Is, and we've been in a data economy for a generation, but it's just getting started. The value of data has not been fully realized. It has been realized by the most valuable companies in the world, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. That's what they are truly expert at, is monetizing yours, mine, everybody's data. And this company is about, this data has enormous value. How can we help you get your cut of that value? Right, which makes a lot of sense. And not only do they use our data and they sell it to advertisers, but for some reason or somehow, this data somehow gets leaked and then it's all out there in the, uh, in, in the dark webs and everything else. So not just but, Google, huh? Facebook, Microsoft, it's Visa, American Express, Citibank, JP Morgan, all of these companies. And by the way, the state of California and every municipality and state in the United States, data is a commodity and it's sold, whether it's credit data, financial data, voting records, real estate data, insurance data, motor vehicle records, you name it. If there's a piece of data on you, it is sold and resold and repacked. You know what I, yeah, and uh, these are the things that we know, but what's great about, because when I was looking at, at, at the bios of everybody's, especially yours, Charlie, I took a look and I go, you know what, this guy knows uh, what it is to collect data, because I think with Real Age, you were doing massive amounts of collection in those days, but we, that was before it was the big thing, right? We collected more data than anybody. We had 400 data points on 60 million users, not just your basic profile, but what you ate, what you mm-hmm. exercised how much sex you had, how many children you had, anything that can, what drugs you take, anything that can impact your well-being. And by the way, you know, my partner, very famous guy, Dr. Mehmet Oz, that's where he got his media career. You know, Dr. Oz on television. He started with Real Age as our spokesperson. (laughs) Um, So that data we use on behalf of the pharmaceutical companies. Sure. And Pfizer wants to reach people with high cholesterol. We would ask our members, would you, you grant permission to Pfizer to send you information on high cholesterol? It was a permission marketing company. And we were very successful and we successfully sold it to Hearst. And that's what now it's version 2.0 of permission. Gotcha. Uh, people earn from that data. Gotcha. So, so we already talked about the basics of permission.io and the ask token. So take us through, because we already, we already know that we can get paid because the, for the tokenomics, we already know that we can receive ask tokens as we watch these different advertisements. So instead of, you know, Facebook and Google as advertisers getting money, it's going to come back to the consumer. But what is what is going to happen in the near future? Because right now, there's it look, looks like a couple advertisers might be working with you, but then you've also got the uh, shopping part. So how is that going to work as far as like the tokenomics for Ask? Well, great question. Our, we're building the infrastructure. We are connected to companies you may or may not know. LiveRam, the Google Ad Exchange. Trade Day, Xander, PubWise. These are all the pipes and the connections that run digital advertising. It's how data is exchanged and used for targeting for billions of people around the world. There are massive companies with these big pipes, Google being the biggest one. Xander is part of AT&T. LiveRamp is a little 50 billion market cap company where all the data flows. Anyway, we are connected to all these companies. And when you sign up for permission, your data is then put into these pipes and people bid for that inventory. Our biggest bidders are PayPal, 
Visa. We have huge advertisers that are bidding for permission users and members, and that's how they get paid. So we get what we get paid, and then we give a big cut to the user via ASK. Gotcha. And so this leads me to one of the, one of the next points, because as people are listening to this at home, they're thinking to themselves, well, I can do that in Brave Browser. I can, I can sign up for Brave and, and get the rewards. Huh? Brave is the opposite. And by the way, we're huge fans of Brave. Huge. Brave collects no data. They are in the opposite end of this business. Right. They don't collect data. They don't use data at all for advertising. And people, all they're doing is opting in to say, I'll receive ads, but they don't share the data. Brave is about privacy. Right. And so for you guys, you guys are saying, look, we're going to take your data and we're going to give you targeted ads that will be specific to you and you'll actually be able to take it back. Or you can just go and peruse on Google, peruse on Facebook and Instagram and then just have all your data taken anyhow and then have whatever ads come up. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, we're we're you're sharing your data. You're granting permission to use data. And now you're saying you're volunteering to be marketed to and say, yeah, I'd like to get targeted ads that pay me and I'm getting a cut. <laughs> yeah. so that's, I mean, the difference is you're, you're going to see, you can use an ad blocker. And by the way, half the internet uses ad blockers, but half the internet that doesn't, you know, these are people saying, I'm getting, I'm, I want to get a cut of what Facebook and Google are making. And it makes perfect sense. So right now, I think there's probably two people watching this video. One is, is the group that's, that's saying, I'm not going to uh, opt into that because I don't want to do that. And then another, there's another group that says, you know what, I can do that because I'm already, I'm already doing that anyhow and not getting paid. And then there's an actual another group who are just the straight investors and thinking to themselves, hmm, how is this going to work as far as with the tokenomics later on? Well, we haven't gotten a lot of people into this, this ecosystem yet. Things are really building. 2021 is definitely the year. So talk real quick about what's going on with the launch of Ask Coin and how things are going to uh, develop as the year progresses. Well, thank you, Rob. You know, Ask is traded on three exchanges. It's traded on uh, Bytex, a decentralized exchange, Bitsum Global, and BitTrue. These are all very high quality, you know, top 30 exchanges in the world. They're not a top 10 exchange. Uh, I am told by our compliance people uh, not to talk about new exchanges. Mm -hmm. All I can say is our goal is to create massive global liquidity. So please interpret that where our roadmap looks like. We want massive global liquidity. We want to be as liquid as any currency out there. So, gotcha. Yeah, and perfect. And we already talked about the white paper and the tokenomics and, you know, yeah, 30 billion to 100 billion. Tokenomics. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we're creating a demand side bidding platform for advertisers. So an advertiser can run a campaign throughout the internet and just target people based on the data that comes through all these pipes that we're all connected to. And they can run a similar campaign, spend the same amount of money, but allocate, let's say, a third to buying ASK tokens to offer to the user. And our contention and my absolute knowledge will be the rewards and people being paid for their data will outperform the, the uh, other campaign orders of magnitude better. So it's better for advertisers and it's better for users. So it's a new, I mean, when we talk about web 3.0, you know, a, a term that I sometimes use, but my people say, I oh, don't use it, but I like it. The win, win, web, W3, win, win, web, where advertisers win, consumers win. And that's what our logo is, is this handshake. You know, everybody wins. Charlie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely steal that. Win-win, the win-win. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, the reason why I was compelled to talk to you, first of all, it was a subscriber that uh, reached out to me and said, hey, this is a great project, and you told me about it. And we talked about marketing and sharing. I'm like, this is great. And when I took a look at the white paper, 
The reason why I was compelled is because I've done digital marketing myself. I've done it for my businesses. I've done it for other businesses. And I can tell you right now, I was doing Facebook ads in 2014, 2015. And it wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty, you know, um, ad relatable and it wasn't uh, too expensive. Every single year though, that price has gone up and up and up. The ROI has gone down and down and down. And then the reach has actually been decreased. So who gets squeezed? Well, everybody who's on those platforms, because you have to remember it's, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's WhatsApp, and then Twitter, eh, not so bad. But once you do that and you have to pay that, all the people that are there, they're not getting a dime and the advertisers like me have to pay through the nose. And that's why Facebook and Amazon are, the, are one of the top 20 uh, you know, companies out there in the world. Yeah, and Google. Um, I mean, Rob, if you're in digital advertising, you know there's a dirty little secret in digital advertising. Every, everybody who participates, Mark Pritchard, the CMO of Procter & Gamble, is one of the biggest advocates. He's paying his four or five billion annual budget. He knows that minimum half and more likely 70% are going to bots, fake accounts. That the clicks and views that they're being reported for sure half, and maybe more than half, are, are not real people. Google, Facebook have no incentive of shutting it down because they benefit from it. But click fraud is the second biggest organized crime business on, in the globe. Hmm. Estimate $100 billion business of organized crime, setting up websites, running ads, running bots to click on stuff. Facebook and Google call this a view. They get paid, everybody gets paid, but Procter and Gamble and the big advertisers are paying the bill. Yeah, and that's what. No, no, go ahead, Troy. No, but that's a big part of the problem that we're solving here. Real people, we doing tremendous work validating users, 2FA, KYC, all of it. They're real people that are interacting with those ads. Yep, and I totally agree. So everybody watching at home, we talk a lot, a lot about this on the channel. We take a look at what is old technology and how things get as we turn them blockbustered. So if we take a look at a bank, how can a bank compete with a decentralized, decentralized finance as it moves over into the next millennia? And now if we take a look at these ads, how can these advertisers actually compete as things go on? Now, I'm not gonna, this is not a financial advice, this is just financial opinion, but if you wanna take a look at where things are going in the future, if I'm an, well, I'm an advertiser, I would tell you right now, I'm going to take a hard look at Permission IO just to see what it's all about. And um, I think that could be the future, especially, it's all about the bottom line. Charlie, anything that we need to, to fill in here before we take off, I know you're busy. Yeah, well, people should download, not only register on permission.io so they can start earning ASK, they can download a browser extension in the Chrome store where you do ads as you surf the web and do the things you normally do. And we're building out numerous use cases where data can be shared, advertisers, advertisements can be viewed, and people can earn ASK. So. Uh, you know, we're going to be announcing more and more use cases, tons of stuff. Pay attention on Twitter. We got a very active Twitter account, Telegram, all of it. So sounds good. And uh, last thing I'll just leave off is this is it's not what you know, it's who you know. So when Mr. Silva here was talking about all the different uh, groups and organizations that they are, are working with as far as the inroads for advertising, uh, maybe it's time to take a look, real hard look at Permission.io. So, Charlie Silver, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. And we'll follow up in the months to come, hopefully when you have some time. Rob, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so that's it. So I hope that answered a lot of questions that uh, Charles could give to us. I mean, again, I like the team. I like the project. I'm going to get into this project, just so you know. And uh, maybe it'll be uh, a pretty big thing. And um, before I take off, two, two, well, actually three things. First of all, if you're the uh, permission, just like Charles was talking about, they have a, uh, a Google uh, extension that you can put on to your, uh, to your, your Google browser or to your uh, Chrome, excuse me, or to Brave, and you can shop and they can give you uh, 
uh, not kickbacks, uh, crypto backs. So that is the first part. Uh, the second thing is, is that <laughs> I got to apologize to Charles because we set this up. He is on Pacific time. I am on mountain time. And when I, I, I kept calling him like, Hey, you ready? You ready? He's like, it's one, it's supposed to be a one. I'm like, yeah, I know it's one. And of course I got the time zones, uh, mixed up. So Charles, I apologize my fault. Eh. And then, uh, lastly, uh, as far as like, like these types of videos, just so you know, they, for a paid promotion, I have to report it to uh, YouTube and I have to report it to you, but on this, on this video, there was, there wasn't a paid promotion. It was actually just some, one of the subscribers that looks, that reached out and goes, Hey, uh, this is a great project. And I got to tell you, it's, I think it's pretty good J on the team alone, on the concepts and the tokenomics. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And that is it for this video. So if you liked the video and found some value, give it a thumbs up that I really appreciate that. And then consider subscribing and a lot of things we talk about. Yeah, a little time sensitive, uh, somewhat. We're going to do some more advanced things. And that's all for today. So thanks so much for watching the entire thing. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.